Welcome to Pseudo Creations where we make your imagination a reality. Today I'm doing a video to show you how I make the Chiari backdrop for my events. I know a lot of you have asked in the past how I create the backboard or where I get them from. When I started my business, I've been making, I made the first one and I've created a few different ones but never had the chance to really show you in detail how I create them. But I decided since I've been getting a lot of questions on how to make them, hopefully I can do a good job showing you how I make this. I am at Home Depot right now here to pick up some wood for this. So I'm going to take you along with me to show you the wood I buy and all that. So if this is your first time tuning in, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Comment down below any videos you would like to see and share as well. It really supports my channel. Thank you guys so much. So the plan today is to buy one board that will give me two. One second. Supposed to give me two Kiara walls. Funny thing is, the design the customer wants has three boards. The design the customer wants has three boards in one and they're different sizes. I already have the biggest size, so what I'm planning to do is maximize the wood save some money use one wood because i believe they come in eight foot so i'm going to make one board that they're eight by four so i'm going to make one board that is three by three and just do the arch that's the shortest one and the other board is going to be six Point, no 4.5 by 3 the width is going to be 3 on both my other width is a bit bigger but I'll put that behind the others so I'll show you all this especially with my next video you see how I put it all together but I want us to go in Home Depot will cut the wood for you but they only make straight cuts so I'm just gonna have them cut 3 by 3 and 3 by 4.5 that way when I get home I'll just form my arch and I'll it'll be easier for me than trying to cut through the straight line because the saw I have will be harder for me to get that straight cut so let's get on into Home Depot it has been raining all morning but the favor of God is that surprisingly it stopped raining right when I was done servicing the car so I'm hoping I can get this done before the next downpour so I can get it home and work on it because I don't have much time to get this all done with work and everything else going on so let's get the wood So this is the middle board, it's all cut, hopefully it works with what I have at home and I'll just arch the top, that's cut and then that's the smaller board right here, 
three by three. This is this is three width by four and a half, and this is three by three. And then these are my scraps. I have a lot of scraps at home. Okay, let's pay for it and head home. pick up the brackets for the stand so that's what I'm going to do now So this is what we're dealing with. You saw me carry this backdrop. I just leaned it over to the back. That is the one I've had and I'm going to use that and I'm just gonna make these two. These are the two we cut at Home Depot. So all I have to do now is create the arch on both of them. Sorry, it's not focused. On both of them to match that. But I love the height, I had to figure out exactly how I wanted the height for this to work and the width you can see this one is pretty wide but I didn't want the other two to be as wide one it's hard enough to carry this wide backdrop let me see if I can measure one second let me measure so you know but these are three feet wide So that was about four feet. I don't want four feet, but I like this one because once you put balloons on it, it makes the whole backdrop proportional. Another thing is I can move these two over to this side if the person wants the design going this way. Don't know if you get what I'm saying. So if the person wants it the opposite where this is on this side and the short it goes down then I can still move it over but what I'm saying is once the balloons go on here it reduces that width and then it all just looks fine right now it actually looks fine especially since we're overlapping each one so this is what I did this was my very first one you can see that it curves a little bit but it's fine once I put it down and I put weights Usually I use my weights on here. It holds it down pretty steady and they don't... You saw me buy the brackets. These are the same ones. So, But this time what I'm going to do is come further in right here so that I have room to overlap. Because you can see here, I don't have that much of a gap right there to overlap another piece of wood. This too, it's gonna overlap by about that much, but that's going to be more towards the back. So actually it's gonna be the opposite because it'll flip over. So this is what I'm doing. I have these 
sorry, pieces of wood right here that I'm going to use for my support here. So I have to cut those. All right, let's get to work. Oh, let me show you the tools. Again, I'm not quite certain. I have some clamps. Hopefully I can replicate this as far as the tools. My husband is not here to help me if I'm stuck on something. I have a stapler right here. My sander, of course you can buy sandpaper and just sand whatever you need, but this works really fast, works like magic. I have this saw right here that I'm going to use to cut out the arch and I have another stapler I don't know for some reason he has about six staplers that I counted I don't know if they're different or what is different but I've got this to measure I took these staples out of this gun so I can measure how deep if it will work with the wood so this is the depth here question is how thick is this one so looks like if I do this it'll I don't know if you can see it'll go through there and grab the wood of course I'm also going to glue I have this glue right here I'll put the glue on there, put the clamps, let it dry, then staple it on. And we're good to go. So let's get this started because it's getting pretty late. As you can see, it's still raining. I'm thankful that the rain stopped enough for me to buy all the wood and get it in. But it's raining now, so let's get to work. It did not record. Uh, okay, I already drew my arch. I'll explain kind of how I do it. I'll kind of show you how I did it, but you can already see the line. So what I do is, this is three feet, three feet wide. So I find the center point, which is 18 inches. So right at 18 inches, pardon the ring, 18 inches. And I also want a depth of arch of 18 inches. So I'm gonna find the midpoint where this will be the top of my arch. Then I measure 18 inches down here, mark, and also 18 inches on this side to mark. So you can see, I ha I'll show you a close up of what I'm doing. So you use a ruler, Mark 18 because it's 36, half of that. On this side, 18, and on this side, 18. And you also want to find the midpoint. So from that point, you mark up here, you want to go down to 18 so that you have where you put your pivot. I'm using my jump rope because that's the closest thing here I could find, it's just faster. You want something firm so it's not going to stretch out and alter this. So I'm looking for where it's attached. You can put a screw here and use thread or some kind of yarn that's not stretchy and attach your pen to that. But I'm just going to do this because it's faster. I don't want to go for a hunt. So I put the end of this right here on the center. And I'm going to extend my pen to the very end right here. So I have this and I'm wrapping that around. And I have it straight. Once it's set to that point and it's firm, let's see, I don't want this, oh, okay. Once it's firm and the cord is out of the way, you're gonna leave this left hand firm and just draw. Like so. And that twisted, you want to keep that hand steady. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. All 
the way to the end. So let me show you what I have. I wanted to show you this because once I cut this, I'm gonna use this exact same thing to draw my other one so I don't have to do this. So I don't like doing this drawing part because I always feel like it's not even. So this is what we have. You can see where I marked the 18, which was half of this three inch, where I marked right here, and then my midpoint right there, and another one right here. So once you have it here, you know that it's straight because once you start drawing, it should come right to that point at the edge. Same on the other side, then you know it's straight. If it goes past it, like how it was trying to do over here because I twisted the pen, you don't want the end to go above it. You want it to stay right here. So I'll have to try my best to follow the best line here because now I have three lines. But I wanted to make sure you guys got this part of the tutorial. But this one is about the same, except that line. So I'll just cut through here. So we're gonna cut this and then we're going to use this wood to lay over that one and just trace because the width is the same. So the side that's at the top cuts rough so if you look at your wood and you see certain blemishes that you don't want to show through I'm hoping this doesn't but like this side was has this part and the opposite side is pretty decent or smooth so you can see where it cuts really really clean on the bottom but the top cuts really rough so this is mainly what we're going to be sanding down I don't know if you can see right there so I'm gonna use this to trace the other cut the other I'm actually out of sandpaper so I have to go to the store again but I might be able to glue on all the wood pieces clamp those down before I head to the store
can't see me i'm gonna let that dry gonna get something to eat go buy sander to sand that piece we're pretty much done except for well no we still have a long way to go I thought about painting so i'm gonna take a break go to home depot to buy the sandpaper and then i'll catch up with you guys later hopefully by that time it's dry enough we still have to staple from the front um, i usually do a staple at the top and the bottom just to hold it in place so i'll get that and make sure i have paint before i go so keep watching So this is what it looks like before I sand it down. You can see the rough edges. I think I showed this earlier, but just to make sure. And this is what it looks like after. It's all sanded down and I tried my best to even out the edges that don't look smooth. This corner here did not blend well and I got that smooth. I didn't want to overdo it could have probably gone more in here but I'm just gonna leave this like that it's ready to paint and put the legs on the back so I'm gonna sand this one and then protect this area and then paint this I'm not gonna spray I'm just gonna roll the paint using this to fill where I staple this slight dent I didn't do that on my other one but I figured why not on this one so I have to put it and think let it dry maybe sand it down I can't remember but I'll read the instructions and paint you can see it right here there's still a little bit of a dent but at least the main part is covered again this is not my official profession but you can see right there where it's flattened out I'm just gonna paint over it at least the screw doesn't show and it's gonna smooth it out so 
it's paint. I don't want to go to Home Depot, so I have to improvise. I can't find my longer handle for the big roller. That would have been faster as well, but I'm just going to use what I have because I don't want to drive to Home Depot. primed now I'll let it dry go get the kids ready for bed and all that evening stuff and then I'll come back and paint probably two coats we'll see this paint is pretty good so it might need just one plus I did a good solid coat of primer so we'll see how things go I'll open the garage door too so that it dries faster okay this is the primer dry I'm going to put my first coat of paint. You can kind of see the spot where I don't know, the screws were, but not too bad. Right here, where the staples, but it's not, it doesn't stand out, so I'm good with that. Let's paint. A second coat or later this week and then I'll put the back on but I'll show you guys how I do all that in the final look also don't forget to subscribe so you can see the video I click the notification bell so you get a notification when I post the video related to this backdrop as well so I'll see you guys later on with a different video or we'll finish this later on <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. Talk to you guys later. Bye. The first coat of paint is done and dry. I want to show you a close-up of what everything looks like. Now, there's still a few streaks because it's the first coat and you can still see the dents for the wood right there. I'm going to try to put another coat of paint but a thicker coat this time just so that it fills in some of those blemishes and smooths out everything. So hopefully with my longer strokes right here, then I can cover and I don't see as many flaws as I did before. Pardon my look. I had to get a workout in this morning and quickly get this done so we can move on and be done with this. And we're ready for the event coming up. Keep watching. Here we are, another day. Welcome back for me anyways. I'm going to finish the backdrop by putting on the legs. So let me show you what I'm using so you can kind of see because it'll be a little harder for me to put you close up to show you what I'm doing. So I have the legs right here. This side is shorter than this one. So this is the side I'm going to put for the ground and this is going to go against the backdrop because then I'll put weight and you can do either one it could be let's see you could also do it like this just so that you have more support along that beam I don't know whichever one you prefer let I'll put it this way so 
it has three holes along here the screws I found go through it so I'm going to use one of these to support or reduce the size of the hole and then screw that on and of course we're screwing it onto those beams that are running downwards you can kind of see what I did with this one I'll show you closer up here in just a second but let me show you what our backdrop looks like so far so this is the backdrop all painted I need to still design the words that are going to go against this one I think it's on the middle one and I need to go grab Benji from the box if you know who Benji is that's my big teddy bear so it's all done because this is fairly clean I'm just gonna flip it over and do that right here but this is the what we're going for here so it's been pretty good with these and I have it long way so that I can support it better so that's the same we're gonna do the same on the other ones Design it where you have the legs coming forward it makes it a little more stable so you don't have to put weights in the back but personally I like the design that you don't see anything in the front because people like to stand in front of the backdrop a lot of times when you tell kids to stand in front of a backdrop they lean move backwards so you don't want them to trip and the whole thing falls down so I like this better because I can put weights in the back and secure it where it doesn't move anywhere. So, turning this around. This, I can already tell, is gonna be a lot sturdier, maybe because of the height, but it's gonna be a lot sturdier than my other one, because my other one is four foot wide, and these are three feet wide. So, let's put the legs on our other one, and I'll stand that up as well, we'll test it out. So, let's keep watching. Now I'm gonna put it all together so I can take a picture for the thumbnail and also show you how they're all standing together. Okay, these are the three boards that I'm going to use for that event. Of course, you can always switch the boards around, put the shorter one here, the middle one here, whichever design you're going for, use two or one. I know I'm gonna be playing with a lot of these here in the future. I have an event coming up that requires all three that's why I made these other two just so I can show you guys because you've asked me several of you have asked me how I 
make these. So this is the one I've always had that I put in most of my videos. And I made this one. The board is a lot thinner, so you can see here. And the board, this one is smoother. This one is a little bit thicker. And it's not as smooth on the front, but you can't tell when it's all put together. Of course, I'm gonna write, I can barely wait, cause that's the theme that's coming up. Stay tuned for that video. These are not supported by any weights. I can show you in the back, pardon the mess back here, but you can see they're all standing on their own as you saw when I did put them up after we put the legs on. So that is it, I have that from my previous backdrop. I just use that to attach the balloon. So I think someone has asked that in the past, how I attach the balloon. So I just use these small heavy duty clips, put that on here and this is thin enough that it'll hold it and I just attach my balloon. See how stretchy it is. Whoa, <laughs> sorry. So that holds pretty well. Let's see if it works on this as well. So yeah, it'll hold on both so I can attach the balloon. So, but I do always make sure that I have my weights in the, weights in the back so that they don't fall over. Another thing I wanted to point out is how you can overlap the backdrop. Some, you, you, if you want the design that you put side by side where they're flush together, you can do that with this. But if you want to overlap them, because of the distance coming in from where we put the legs, you can also overlap them that way. So that's another option. Some people create a rectangle with wood in the back as their support. That gives better support. You don't need as much weight. But again, you can't overlap with that design. So I like this method. So I'm gonna take a picture. Thank you so much for watching. With all the effort and the days we've gone through, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe so I can continue to create this content for you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Have a blessed, blessed day.